Endosymbiont theory. What is endosymbiosis? Endosymbiosis refers to the symbiotic relationship between two organisms, where one organism lives within the other organism, eventually benefiting both the partners. Endosymbiotic theory for eukaryote origin. It is thought that life arose on Earth around 4 billion years ago. During the 1950s and 60s, scientists found that both mitochondria and plastids inside plant cells are more closely related to modern-day prokaryotes. The endosymbiotic theory states that some of the organelles in primitive eukaryotic cells, such as mitochondria and chloroplast were once free-living prokaryotic microbes. The ancestral host cell got nutrients by a mechanism called phagocytosis. Some of these organisms engulfed the prokaryotic cells as food. Rather than being digested by or killing the host cell, the internalized prokaryotic cell survived within the organism and developed a symbiotic relationship. Over time, the organelle and the host cell have evolved together, and today they function as a single organism. Mitochondria and chloroplasts are certainly evolved from gram-negative bacteria, such as aerobic alpha-proteobacteria and photosynthetic cyanobacteria, respectively. The symbiotic origin of eukaryotic cells is a multi-event process. Before proceeding to endosymbiotic theory, let's talk about the hypothetical evolution of endoplasmic reticulum. This is an ancient prokaryotic cell with no internal membranes, and this is the cell membrane, cytoplasm, and nucleoid. A small portion of the plasma membrane has invaginated, which are called the cell membrane enfoldings. Further membrane enfoldings began the formation of endoplasmic reticulum. It encloses the nucleoid, thereby forming the nuclear envelope. Endoplasmic reticulum and nuclear membrane together constitute the endomembrane system. This is called the first eukaryotic cell. Primary endosymbiosis. It refers to the initial engulfment of a free-living bacterium by a proto-eukaryotic host cell, producing a new organelle within the host cell. In the course of time, the host cell and the engulfed bacterium developed a symbiotic relationship. Origin of mitochondria and chloroplasts are the most prominent examples of primary endosymbiosis. The process of primary endosymbiosis begins when the anaerobic eukaryotic host cell engulfed the gram-negative alpha-proteobacterium. In the long run, alpha-proteobacterium evolved into mitochondrion and eventually developed into eukaryotic animal cell. Subsequently, the ancestral eukaryotic host cell ingested another gram-negative cyanobacterium that evolved into chloroplast. Later, it became the photosynthetic eukaryotic plant cell or algal cell. The first and foremost step in endosymbiotic theory is the origin of mitochondria. This is the anaerobic eukaryotic cell with organelles, such as endoplasmic reticulum and nucleus. This eukaryotic cell engulfed the aerobic alpha-proteobacterium, which has DNA. The endocytosed proteobacterium has evolved into a mitochondrion. As the endosymbiont is aerobic, it provided energy source to the host cell eventually transforming it into aerobic eukaryotic animal cell. Nextly, origin of chloroplasts. This is the heterotrophic eukaryotic cell with organelles, such as endoplasmic reticulum and mitochondrion. An ancestral eukaryotic host cell engulfed a photosynthetic cyanobacterium with DNA. It converts sunlight into energy through photosynthesis, the endocytosed cyanobacterium endosymbiont has evolved into a chloroplast with two membranes. As the endosymbiont is photosynthetic, the host cell emerged as photosynthetic eukaryotic plant cell or algal cell. Secondary endosymbiosis An ancestral eukaryotic cell engulfs another photosynthetic eukaryotic algal cell that is already undergoing primary endosymbiosis. The algal cell already has a double-membraned chloroplast, as well as a nucleus and other organelles. This secondary engulfment resulted in the diversification of eukaryotic lineages and the emergence of new types of organelles. Different groups of algae and plants have acquired plastids through secondary endosymbiosis. Formation of plastids through secondary endosymbiosis 
This is an ancestral eukaryotic cell with nucleus and mitochondrion engulfed another photosynthetic eukaryote algal cell that is already undergoing primary endosymbiosis. The primary endosymbiont has a double-membraned chloroplast. The nucleus of the engulfed cell disappears as the host cell only needs energy from the chloroplast. The remnants of nucleus that lie between the two pairs of membranes is called nucleomorph, and now this is referred to as the secondary endosymbiont. Ultimately, the chloroplast is left with four membranes, rather than two-membraned chloroplast, that is obtained by primary endosymbiosis. Let's talk about few evidences that support the endosymbiotic theory. The first one is the structural similarities. Both mitochondria and chloroplasts are double-membraned organelles and are almost of the same size as prokaryotic cells. Secondly, evolutionary relationships. Analysis of genetic sequences evinced that mitochondria and chloroplasts are more closely related to specific groups of bacteria than eukaryotic cells. Thirdly, reproduction. Mitochondria and chloroplasts replicate within the cell independently by binary fission. Ribosomes. Mitochondria and chloroplasts have their own ribosomes with 30S and 50S subunits, unlike eukaryotic cells with 40S and 60S subunits. Genetic evidence. Mitochondria and chloroplasts have their independent circular DNA, and their genes are very much similar to the genes of modern day prokaryotes. Thanks for watching. Please do like and share this video. Also, click on the subscribe button and hit on the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos.